Good afternoon. The meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals will now come to order. Roll call. Mr. Bacilli is absent. Mr. D'Angelo? Present. Present. Mr. Lopes? Present. Present. Mr. Mazzoni? Present. Present. Mr. Pelton? Present. Present. Mr. Tucker? Present. present. Quorum is present. First matter before the board is the application of CBW Lending, LLC, uh, appealing from the decision of the Inspector of Buildings of the City of Revere, wherein the Inspector of Buildings contends that said property is being illegally used for commercial automotive storage and or a commercial parking lot currently storing and or parking over 1,000 vehicles at the property which requires a special permit from the City Council Said permit expired on July 30th, 2015. The appellant contends that they have a special permit issued by the Revere City Council for parking of motor vehicles, which is currently valid and in full force and effect, and that the operation of the parking lot may legally be conducted at 190 VFW Parkway, Revere. The microphones are live. You don't have to do anything. And that's just for the viewing audience for the TV. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, James Sipple, letter 385 Broadway, Revere. On behalf of CBW Lending, the owner and operator of the former Wonderland Greyhound Park. As the board is aware, over the last couple of years, there has been some development activity or proposed activity at the venue, and it has not yet come to complete fruition. We were before the board uh, about a month ago at its last uh, meeting, and it was transmitted to the board through our motion to continue the case that the city and the ownership was actively engaged in discussions aimed at resolving any of the outstanding issues. I have filed uh, this morning with the office of the clerk and the clerk of the, of the chair of the uh, Board of Appeals a further motion to continue this matter on the basis that there is a memorandum of understanding being circulated. It appears that the parties have reached an agreement in principle to put to rest the uh, remaining issues surrounding the use of the property at the former Wonderland Greyhound Park facility. I'm given to understand that this memorandum of understanding is to be signed by the parties on Tuesday, a meeting that has been scheduled uh, by the city for representatives of CBW Lending and the others involved in the ownership of Wonderland Greyhound Park. I'm suggesting, Mr. Chairman, that it is to the benefit of all to continue this one more time to give the city and the ownership the ability to um, sign up their agreement and put all of the outstanding issues to rest. It's not just the issue that is pending before the Board of Appeals that uh, is live. Uh, there is at least one more issue. So I would uh, respectfully request a continuance for one further time. We expect that this matter will be resolved on its own. Thank you. Okay, seeing that this is a public hearing, are there any proponents? Hearing none, I'll close that side of the hearing. Are there any opponents? Hearing none, I'll close that side of the hearing. Up. The Ward Councilor, Councilor Powers. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, John Powers. I'm the Ward 5 Counselor. I live at 46 Naponsa Street in Revere. I mean, the, the zoning officer for the city of Revere has issued his opinion that they are parking there illegally. Their special permit that they had expired two years ago. It's dead. It's gone. To continue to park cars there, they would have to come before the city council, get a special permit, and then go before the licensing board of this city to have a license issued to them. That hasn't happened. Appeal after appeal, all that's doing is delaying them from, a, if there's a negative position by this board, they go to superior court but the time keeps running and running and they keep parking cars down there, making money and bringing traffic into this city at, at the expense of the residents of Ward 5 in the city of Revere. There's already uh, been an accident down there with a, a car uh, from, uh, I believe, Hertz that, that they were bringing in there. Uh, I have a copy of that which I can submit to the board to look at. 
uh, it's wrong. They don't have, they're, they're operating illegally. They have no more right to, uh, to park down there than I do to go into the bank and say, give me a hundred dollars. It's wrong. And I ask this board to not issue any more continuances. I don't know anything about a, a memorandum of understanding. Apparently the, the attorney has more information than the city council does. So I would ask that there be no more continuances and, and if they go to Superior Court, or if you rule, rule in their favor, that's one thing, but they shouldn't be just have continuance after continuance. They're just dragging it out, stalling it, and making money at the expense of the residents of this city. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other opponents? Hearing none, I'll close that side of the hearing. Any members wish to speak? This is only on the motion, right, to continue. This, this is, yes. okay, not on the, the merits. Am I, do I understand that correctly? Well, the merits. This the, merits. the merits. This is on the merits as well. Well, I'd like to be heard on the merits. Okay. But I would like to be heard on whether or not the board is amenable to continuing the hearing for us. We will not decide that until the end of the meeting when we vote on everything. Okay. So there would be a motion to uphold the, in the in building inspection's decision. Okay. So then uh, on the merits, Mr. Chairman, I'll... Uh, summarize what in the application and expand on it a little bit more and fill in perhaps for the board and also the city councilor uh, what what the facts uh, of, of this case are. As the board well knows that uh, for many years prior to the closing of Wonderland Greyhound Park, Wonderland was utilizing its parking lot for, no surprise, parking. And part of that parking was used for um, activity associated with racing and the other part of the parking lot was used number one for commuter parking and secondly another part of the uh, parking lot was sectioned off for storage and for the longest time the the um, ownership had a special permit to operate the commuter parking which was separate from storage of motor vehicles ancillary to the use as a um, racing uh, establishment. When the MBTA built its facility, the city and Wonderland agreed that uh, Wonderland would back off of the commuter parking so that the MBTA could utilize its garage and offer that to the, the motoring public. <coughs> that did happen. When Wonderland finally closed, we were asked to go to the city council to apply for a special permit, something that we did not have to do for the 15 years prior thereto. And it was suggested that since Wonderland had closed, even though it was a parking lot, we couldn't park there because we didn't have an active use at the, at the site. Well, we did that. And that was probably 19, uh, sorry, 2013 or thereabouts. As um, part of the presentation to the city council at that time, the ownership had a number of different development plans and was hopeful that Wonderland would be developed and it would not be used for parking ad infinitum. The circumstances were such that um, the prevailing winds uh, bowed against us and they were not able to develop as, or sell to a developer as quickly as they had planned. The city council granted the license to park the cars and we applied to the Re Real License Commission for a license for 750 cars. And we paid the $25 per space for that number of cars uh, during that course. The city council adopting the optimism of the ownership back in 2013 that it had hoped to develop Wonderland or sell it to a developer in two years put a condition on the license that it would expire in two years, which would have been 2015. 2015 comes and goes, 2016 is halfway through and somebody opens the file and says, wait a minute, this is a special permit that should have expired in 2015, although you're still parking cars and doing what you've been doing for 20 years. This year, or I'm sorry, last calendar year, 2017, the building inspector served a cease and desist upon the ownership asking them to stop parking cars because they did not have a valid special permit that they would have to go back to the city council. Our research and reading of the statute and the case law that under the statute 
um, is contrary to that position. Our position is, and the courts have held, that you cannot put a sunset clause on a special permit. A special permit is a special permit until such time as you call the applicant or the permit holder of that license to the, the body issuing it, being the, the city council, and have a hearing as to whether or not that special permit should continue in force or should be revoked or somehow amended. That didn't happen. There's case law on that. I think I put it in my, in my application. Hoppen Garden versus Board of Appeals. That's 1984 from, from the Appeals Court. 17 Mass App, Appeals Court, 1006. Also, um, Lobosa Building Corporation versus the Planning Board of uh, Bellingham. That's 454 Mass, 123. That's a Supreme Judicial Court case. All we were asking for is the ability to keep doing what we were doing or give us, pro give us the due process of having us come up and say we are going to visit whether or not your permit actually is alive. In the interim, and as the board has, has probably been uh, informed, we were before the License Commission on this matter, we have been before the Board of Appeals on this matter, and the city has been all along talking to the owners of Wonderland about taking care of the outstanding issues. One is the demolition of the building, which did start in, in the summertime and was proceeding, and at some point it was discovered that there was asbestos in the building and that had to stop. Uh, DEP intervened in the process, and we are now at the third level of uh, proceedings at DEP, and they have a cease and desist on bringing the building down. That's kind of put us back a little bit in our intended schedule of the intended schedule of the, uh, the ownership. But all along, the ownership in the, in the city have been talking about putting this matter behind them and coming to a global resolution of both the licensing and the special permit uh, issues. I was given the points that were uh, agreed between the city and the ownership. They came to me by, by email. There's a memorandum of understanding that's being circulated uh, by which all of the issues should be put to rest by, they tell me, a meeting that's supposed to happen on Tuesday. That's why I had asked for the continuance. On the, uh, the case on the merits, I would just say, as I had said to the building inspector and to the uh, honorable counselor who had um, quizzed me on this, is if you're going to take away a special permit, there's a way to do it. And we would, more, more than, we would be more than happy to come to the city council if you said, hey, look, we need to visit this special permit. And if we think we, that you don't, it, you don't uh, deserve the special permit continuing in effect, then we're going to revoke it. But that's what's called due process, and we never had that. So that's why we ended up here, all against the backdrop of the city and the, uh, uh, the ownership uh, negotiating and coming to agreements to solve, to solve their problems. Um, but I will say that um, as the action of the building inspector flies in the face of the due process rights of the permit holder, he was a little bit out ahead of himself, and to give the cease and desist was not done lawfully. And I would ask the board to so find. Thank you. Thank you. I believe that the applicate the uh, sp special permit that was issued clearly states that it expires in two years. That's my understanding. That's number one. And seeing as how the attorney uh, brought up the demolition of the building, right now there's a humongous pile, or several piles, of material which apparently uh, have been uh, deemed non-removable by the DEP because they may contain asbestos or other contaminants that are out in the open. Stuff's blowing all around the place down there. They haven't even showed this city the courtesy to cover those up. It's broken glass all through the windows. They haven't even showed this city the courtesy to take that down. They're 100% wrong. <coughs> and I ask that, that they be denied. Thank you. Okay, the next calendar item number is?
The next uh, matter before the board is application A1728, the application of A Chara Development, LLC 30B Railroad Street Revere, requesting the following variances, minimum front yard setback, minimum side yard setback, minimum rear yard setback, maximum floor area ratio of 3.0, minimum parking requirements, tandem parking, as well as grade of 8% for the enclosed driveway for residential apartment use to enable the appellant to raise the existing commercial structures and residential dwelling to construct a 145 unit residential structure with 2,500 square feet of restaurant and retail space with 174 parking spaces at 320, 327 Revere Beach Boulevard, Revere. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is Attorney Lawrence Semioni, 300 Broadway, Revere, Massachusetts, and I represent Achara Development, LLC of 30B Railroad Street, Revere, Massachusetts, and I have with me this evening Matthew Philbin, the manager of the LLC. As a matter of housekeeping, Mr. Chairman, we're withdrawing the request for the floor area ratio variance because the project now uh, is now in compliance uh, as shown on the new table, 3.0 for the floor area ratio. So we will not be seeking relief for the floor area ratio. Also, um, I've submitted to the zoning board clerk a traffic study by TEC as well as proposed conditions that, that we have talked to uh, the Community and Development Office about that we're offering as part of our requested grant for the variance. This evening I have with me Rick Salvo of Engineering Alliance along with Talia Casintra of uh, Cube 3 and they'll make brief presentations uh, after mine. That said, as the Zoning Board Clerk read, we are seeking four different types of variances setback variances in the first and the front yard, the side yard and the rear yard, and with a tandem parking variance, a minimum parking variance, and a driveway grade variance. Um, as you look at the table, you'll see that the, we're asking for a side yard uh, of 9.7 feet, and we're looking at uh, the front yard to follow with the other properties uh, to be right on the front, um, and so there'll be a zero uh, front yard uh, proposal. The property is known as 320-329 Revere Beach Boulevard. It's located in the RC1 district. It's approximately 49,118 square feet, 1.13 acres. It has three non-conforming structures thereon. The non-conforming structures consist of uh, two commercial buildings and a, and a two-family dwelling. These structures are non-conforming because his, as you look at them in the site plan with the pre-existing conditions, you'll see that the structures themselves all violate the front yard requirement in the RC1 district. Two of them violate the side yard requirement and I believe all of them violate the rear yard requirement of 30 feet now in that district. The, um, all three of these structures, given the lots that they sit on, do fail to have minimum parking for the proposed uses that they have. So they are non-conforming as to parking as well. The project we propose is to construct a six-story mixed-use development with about 2,500 square feet of commercial space, 145 residential units. Due to the soil conditions and to the topography conditions, which will be presented via a geological study and uh, the presentation of Engineering Alliance, Mr. Salvo, these conditions have required us to adapt and seek these variances in order that we can construct the proposed project. The existing project as I told you, is a mixed-use project and will require a special permit from the City Council um, with respect to, mix, to the mixed-use aspect as well. Consistent, the 145 units consists of 79 one-bedroom 
and studio units, which represent 55% of the project. 61 units will be two bedrooms, which represent 42% of the project. We have three, uh, five three bedrooms, one on each floor, uh, represents 5% of the project. Currently, we're providing 188 spaces, which puts us at 1.35%, which is greater than required under the TOD district, which abuts our property. The current requirement is 253 spaces because a one bedroom is 1.5 spaces, a two bedroom is 1.75 spaces, and a three bedroom is two spaces under the current RC1 district under the dimensional controls for parking. We're proposing as part of the project a shuffle service. Shuttle service. <laughs> Always something. Anyway, the shuttle service will allow the operators of the building to provide for its residents an opportunity to be transferred from the building to the local mass transit location. It will be something that's automatic, it will be provided for free, and it will be part of the general operation of the building. We'll also be providing two spaces for cars that are rented on a daily basis, short-term rentals. They're called zip cars. That's an actually uh, proper name, so I can't call it a zip car, but it gives you an idea. These, these particular vehicles will be on site all the time, available for our residents to use at a charge established by the vendor. The traffic study done by TEC establishes that the impact of the 145 units on the Riviera Beach corridor in Ocean Ave will be minimal. They anticipate 1,000 trips, less than 1,000 trips a day. That would be 500 trips out of the building and 500 trips in the building. We have also proposed for you to review uh, conditions. These conditions were sent and put in a letter to the uh, board, the entire board, and to the clerk. And so these conditions are meant to address certain recent issues that have been developing in the beach with beach development. And everything is a learning curve, and so these are ideas and these proposals are to cure some of the ills that recent development has caused. So the conditions we propose is that off-street parking will be limited by leasehold agreements with tenants to the number of off-street parking approved with the project. Prior to leasing, building management will commit to exploring available T-PASS programs for residents without vehicles. Apartment leasehold agreements will incorporate parking charges. The project shall provide for bicycle parking in the garage at no additional charge to the tenants and also will provide convenient access to available bike sharing pro projects. As I noted before, we'll be providing two spaces for the zip car or rental car. And finally, the developer has committed to participate uh, in a cost uh, contribution to a recent uh, water traffic, waterfront traffic study uh, done by the city of Revere. Contribution would be 50% of the cost of that study or $25,000. I'd like to introduce Mr. Rick Salvo of Engineering One. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Rick Salvo with Engineering Alliance, um, office at 194 Central Street um, in Saugus, Mass. Um, <clears throat> I can pull this off. Good. I, I think everyone's uh, fairly familiar um, with the location um, of the subject property. I pull this aerial graphic up just to orientate ourselves. Revere Street is at the bottom of the page. Uh, Revere Beach Boulevard um, runs uh, up and down the page, and the subject parcel um, right here is comprised of 1.13 acres 
um, and it also makes up about nine uh, tax map parcels. <clears throat> the sites are currently the sites currently occupied by three buildings. I think, as most people are aware, uh, the former Boulevard uh, restaurant right here, which now is a sign of Marco's Tacos on it. Can I just cut you off for yep. a second? For the viewing public, it's on the screen as well. If you feel I have to, you can turn that because we can see the screen. So why don't you turn that to the to the audience? Okay. You're, you're, and then we can see it through the TV. We also have copies of ourselves. Perfect. Okay, so as I was saying, there's three um, buildings located on the parcel, uh, the former Boulevard restaurants right here, uh, the Bianchi's Pizza building is right here in the middle of the parcel, um, and on the end here is an existing uh, two-family dwelling. If I put up the survey parcel here, um, this shows the nine tax map parcels. The three buildings are highlighted in brown, as you can see. Um, <clears throat> all of them are non-conforming uh, in nature in one way or another. All of them in front yard setback. None of them meet the front yard setback requirement. Uh, most of them are non-conforming on the side yard um, requirement. Um, and then this particular lot here in the two family um, is non-compliant relative to um, lot coverage um, and, and the density of the subject uh, parcel. Um, if you take a look at the topography on the land, um, in the existing conditions, um, Revere Beach Boulevard is at or about elevation 14. Uh, the rear of this site is at about elevation 7. So there's about a 7 foot change in grade from as you, as you leave the boulevard and walk towards the rear of the property, which is pretty consistent of all the properties um, up and down the boulevard in this stretch. Um, a good portion of this um, parcel of land is located within the 100-year floodplain. The 100-year floodplain is at elevation 11, so it's about three feet lower than the sidewalk, which puts the rear third of this property um, within the 100-year floodplain, and the front third of the property is outside of the 100-year floodplain. So that's essentially the way the existing conditions line up. Just a really quick, just talk about there's an existing sewer main located in the rear of the property, which is, I'm sure the board's aware, most of the um, locations on the boulevard, actually all the locations of the boulevard, all discharge their sewage out the back uh, into the municipal sewer system. And there's an existing 12-inch water main um, out front in Revere Beach Boulevard, uh, which will provide adequate domestic um, and fire service uh, for, the, for the development and for these parcels of land. Um, in addition, there's also gas located out in the boulevard, and the electric services are located um, in the former uh, narrow-gauge railroad located behind the property. So to the, to the rear of the property um, is land that's owned currently by the Commonwealth. Um, it's occupied by the existing municipal, municipal sewer system and power system. Um, also to the south um, is also um, Sullivan Field, which is as you know, owned by DCR. Um, they seem to do a decent job maintaining that field, although at this point in the game, as far as a ball field, it doesn't appear to get uh, quite a lot of use. If we look at the proposed uh, condition, this is the footprint of the proposed building, you see. So um, as Attorney Simeone noted, this is a five-story wood frame building over two levels of concrete uh, podium parking. The first level of uh, podium parking will be at street level. There's the lower level of podium parking, you will drive down this driveway and enter um, at the lower level at or about elevation four and a half. Um, <clears throat> the reason why for the two colors here, so this gray that you see underneath here represents the um, podium parking underneath the building, which is just this footprint right here. And then this tan color is the building above. So that's the five stories. So as you can see, it's kind of a U-shaped building, um, similar um, in, in some ways to the beach house that's um, further down the boulevard, just to kind of give some size and shape here rather than just having uh, one huge massing of building. 
Um, there's currently three curb cuts um, that service the property. This particular curb cut will be closed. This particular curb cut will be closed. This curb cut that exists will be retained and that will provide access to the, to the development. Folks accessing the, the development by vehicle will pull into the driveway. They'll pull in right here to the upper level of parking uh, where they can access 83 parking spaces on the top level. Um, those 83 parking spaces include four accessible spaces, two compact spaces, um, and there's 14 tandem spaces um, located in, in this area here. With the exception of the compact spaces, all the spaces, space sizes and dimensions meet the criteria um, of, the, of the zoning bylaw, the, the size, shape, and aisle width. If I flip to the lower level, uh, folks again will travel now down the driveway, so they'll travel from elevation 14 down to about elevation four and a half, enter in here, where they will access 105 parking spaces um, for a total of 188 parking spaces between the upper level and lower level. So there'll be no parking spaces uh, visible to the public. They'll all be screened um, by the building and no surface parking. All the parking is underneath uh, the building in this scenario. If we look at the setbacks, um, as we said, we're trying to um, include 2,500 square feet of restaurant or retail space. And in order to do that, similar to the way the buildings are now in order to engage the public, um, those buildings really need to be sort of on the back edge of sidewalk. You know, especially if we're successful in keeping Yankee's Pizza there, the way it's a takeout pizza window, people need to be able to access it um, right, on, right on the uh, back edge of sidewalk, thus the zero uh, lot line setback, which really only exists here and here. You can see we've sort of created a cutout here much like Renzo's a little further down, just so we can create a little outdoor seating area uh, for folks um, accessing the restaurant retail establishment. You can see on the right-hand side here, by and large for most of the side yard, we meet the side yard setback. We only become non-compliant for this small stretch right here, which are the upper level floors, which overhang um, the, uh, the podium parking. So we have a 10-foot setback here where 20 feet is required. We have a 10-foot setback here where 30 feet is required. Um, and on this side, there's a little bump out right here. By and large, this is all 10 feet along the ball field, but there's one small spot where it becomes 9.7 feet. Um, so, so that sort of outlines um, the, um, the, uh, the setbacks and how the building fits in a lot. As you can see, it meets the lot coverage requirement. It now meets the um, FAR requirement. Um, so from a dimensional standpoint, um, the only place that we're non-compliant is in the actual front side and rear yard um, setbacks. Um, I think it's important to note, but it's, I don't really want to spend a lot of time on it. Um, in terms of stormwater management. That's you know, nothing to do with okay. it. Okay. Uh, well, just real quickly, we're managing the stormwater on site. Um, and we are significantly reducing the rate of stormwater runoff um, that, that exits off this property. We also need to go to the Conservation Commission and probably that, um, that topic will be better discussed um, at the Conservation Commission. Um, obviously our utilities will be connected like I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation to the existing sewer main in the back, the existing water main um, in the front. Um, obviously there's three criteria. Um, by which uh, this board focuses uh, for the issuance of a variance, and that's um, lot shape, uh, topography, and soil conditions. Um, we did submit some information. We had extensive soil testing um, done on this property um, by Haley and Aldrich. Um, there's some organics that you see in those borings, um, which will need to be excavated out, um, and this building that will enable us to set this building up to be more of a traditional construction um, on spread footings. Um, and obviously, um, the, the higher groundwater table here prevents us from going further down into the ground, you know, to put additional, um, additional parking below the groundwater table, which really can't be done. Um, and the organic layers in there really prevent us or make it very difficult for us to be able to go up 
um, with a high-rise building. So for many reasons, a low-rise building makes a lot of sense uh, for, this, for this particular property. A low-rise building is anything under 70 feet by the, um, by the state building code. Um, as you know, the, the height requirement in the zoning district is in excess of 100 feet. Um, we also have a change in grade through the property that we have to deal with, um, and that causes the building to be stretched out, which causes the need to be able to, you know, and this is where the lot shape comes into play, as well as the topography, to extend this building, you know, to encroach into the rear yard setback so we can get from the front grade um, to the rear grade um, to be able to access uh, both garage levels. Um, that's essentially the way that the site lays out. Um, and I think, uh, just quickly here, I think it makes sense where we have a, a, a building that's already been mostly designed uh, to turn over to the architect just to run through the look of the building and the height of the building and the skin of the building? Or? We don't need that. You don't need that? Not at all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, to sum up, the one point that uh, I'd like to have the board understand is that in order to do the mixed-use building, we're going to need to go back to the City Council and gather their uh, votes. Uh, we've been working with the St. George. Unfortunately, I understand um, that my client tells me there was a death in the manager's family, and that's delayed our ability to speak with them. Um, but they're looking at things like exterior of the building, streetscape, which has been advanced by the Community Development Office, and also our desire to keep Bianchi's. I'm, I think it's part of history. Bianchi's has been there since the 1950s with Joe Nemo's original developer as a, a commercial property on, on the beach. So that said, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, if the board has any questions, we stand ready to answer. Thank you. Seeing that this is a public hearing, are there any proponents? Anyone in favor? Mike. You asked the, ask the questions after. Um, are there any proponents? Hearing none, I'll close that side of the hearing. Are there any opponents? The ward councillor would be able to speak first, please. Mr. Powers, if you have something to say, please come up to the microphone. Well, before you even speak, um, there was questions that I think we have to just make sure that they're, they're answered tonight. Um, the plans that are in front of us tonight are not the same plan that was presented in the original meeting here. There have been changes which were stated tonight, but we want to make it uh, very clear that there were changes. One is the floor ratio, which they do not need a variance for. The other is it went to from 174 parking spaces to 188 parking spaces with 14 being tandem the last time there was seven. The size of the units and the amount of units remain the same. Just that that was a couple of questions that have been asked and we made it clear that we'd state that. Mr. Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I'm here tonight representing the people that live in the St. George and the people that reside in Ward 5 and perhaps even throughout the city. My understanding is that as a matter of right, they could probably put 80 or 90 units down there, maybe even 100. They don't have the parking. I have never heard anyone come before this body or the city council asking for relief for 75 or 80 parking spaces. It's, it's been unheard of. We, have a, we had a project proposed down at the Cove site, which is off Revere Street, which is part of that bottleneck, I might add. And they came in and they wanted to put 73 units there. They were denied. They were told to put, as you, put there what you can as a matter of right. This project here includes five three-bedroom units. I have a, a, a letter here from the Mass Department of Education. You take Randolph to Salem. 
There's one school in the middle of all of that that is over the number of students allowed or acceptable. Right in the middle. The only school out of perhaps 80 schools in that, in that whole area. No one can tell me that anyone that rents an apartment with three bedrooms is going to bring kids into the school system. The Pauri there school is already overcrowded. Don't take my word for it. Talk to the superintendent. She'll tell you. It's, I cannot understand why people come before this board looking for zoning changes, maybe putting a bedroom in for their, one of their parents that's elderly, maybe putting a garage in the rear of the house, maybe a swimming pool, something like that. But to ask for a variance for 80 vehicles, for approximately 50 units, to me, that's insane. And I know you're going to hear, or you've already heard people say, well, you know, they ride bicycles. They're millennials. The next thing they'll be telling us, they ride donkeys to work or to the MBTA station. That won't happen. I don't know. Most people that have two bedrooms have two cars. Wife has one. The husband has one. With our present zoning, we don't even meet that requirement, never mind adding uh, a, a, a variance for 80 more vehicles down there. You're going to hear tonight from people from the St. George, from other parts of the boulevard. A woman just handed me tonight 60 some odd signatures that she gathered in the past couple of days from people that live in the St. George. It's time we have to start thinking about the residents in this city that pay taxes, that live on that boulevard because they maybe sold their house and they went down there and they found a more comfortable way of life in their elder years. The young professionals that come in here that made an investment in those condominiums down there, those are the people we have to start thinking about. Zoning is in place for a reason to define what's acceptable to the city of Revere and its residents. And as I said before, there are variances issued for certain things, but certainly not for 50, 45 units. I've never heard that before. That's a new one to me. Not for 80 cars, plus two side yards and a rear yard setback. I've never heard that before. I would ask you tonight, in the interest of the people that reside in this city to say no. Do what you can do as a matter of right. If you can put 100 units in there and provide the adequate parking, do it. You have a right to do it. But don't start circumventing the zoning laws in this city to that extreme. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. I am limiting the, um, the conversations and opponents to the two minutes that we always have. I did was lenient for the counselor, and I was lenient for the presentation because there was new information provided. So please don't be offended, but we try to keep it to the two minutes. If you Thank you very much, Mr. Paulus. I speak, I agree with him totally. I've been living in oh, uh, sorry, you have to state your name and address for the record. My so name is uh, Glenn Manson Hing. I've been living in 350 Rivera Beach Boulevard for this since 1991. Thank you. Okay, and I'm an owner there. Okay. First of all, this is 240, 45, 40, 40 something odd units. We hardly have parking. Yes, we have parking there, but when we have guests and so on, we have a hard time parking there. Could you st please stay at the microphone just because we You're can't. You're putting up 140 something, something odd units inside here, so don't stop right here. Number one, where are the guests that you have coming? Where, where, where are your guests that come to the units that park, number one? Number two, where are you going to have the parking for the people that come and use 
the yeah, either whatever unit um, consists of downstairs, right? Three. Now, uh, I mean, you know what the owners of this building is going to do. They're going to rent out their spaces so people yeah. are rent inside there. So guess what's going to happen? They're going to park in the street. Yeah. Where in the street? You can't park five cars in the street there. Yeah. Part of this park, what, 140 something cars get every unit in one car? And you know that's not going to happen. I have three cars and I get inside there, right? So that's not going to happen. I honestly ask you not to agree to any of these variances. Look where, look where these variances are putting, right up to the street. That's gonna make it gonna look so ugly. All those other units they have down there, those other buildings that I don't know who agreed to do, where the, where, where the variances are right up to the other street. It's so ugly and it faces what we all try to do in Revere, where all the other units, where all the other units have set back. And you're gonna do that here. It's not only gonna, it's gonna bring the wrong elements inside this in the city, is I am I am totally opposed to this development and the way it is done. Okay. If you have a right to put a fifty something units, go ahead. All my all means go ahead and do it. But hundred and forty three units, give me a break. Mm -hmm. This is ridiculous. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Any other opponents? Please state your name and address for the record. Yes, Deborah Habig-Schneck. I'm an owner of two units at 350 Riviera Beach Boulevard. And uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the Zoning Board, again on the 27th, the 29th of November, and then in December, I objected. And I objected because, number one, traffic congestion. There's a reference, and I know Mr. Salvo, uh, I spoke with him, and he said he was going to carry out a study. He also made a reference to a study that the city was going to carry out. Uh, it should be something that we have a right to review and that there should be comment on. So if there are traffic studies, we should have a right to see them. Traffic congestion is very serious. Revere has created many, many events at the beach. The beach is a big, big draw and it brings in a good economic income to our city. Uh, it's a beautiful place, but we need and we should have uh, a solution to our traffic problems. Again, 45 minutes to get up to the boulevard once people start coming out. There's no solution now being proposed. You uh, need to address this because it's going to increase with this large building. Parking. Uh, Bianchi's use parking in the background. Non-conforming use versus non-conforming use. Three residences and a restaurant and the new building. Uh, Three-story there's a few cars in the back. Every one of us can see those cars. There are a minimal number of residents, maybe 12 or 14. There's the restaurant. Bianchi's allows people to park in the back, but everyone else comes. Bianchi's is great. We all know the Bianchi family. But if you park on the street, it takes a while to park, and it backs up the boulevard while people are parking. There is nothing on this to take care of the people who are going to come in there. There's a retail store. We don't know what it is. If it's a Tedesco, great. Where are the people going to park? You can't park in here. There's no guest parking. We have something like a 20 unit visitor parking at two, four, uh, 350 Revere Beach Boulevard at the St. George. There's nothing here. In addition, the traffic studies then have not been shown to us. There's no way of stopping the traffic that goes on to <coughs> Revere Street. Backing up, we have a new complex uh, further up the boulevard. People are coming down and can't get off in the morning, during the day, especially during beach time. I reiterate and repeat, our fire engines, our fire department, our police, our EMT cannot get up the boulevard. We have a lot of senior citizens who sold their homes and moved on to the boulevard. We need to know that safety is a priority and the board is listening to us. So we have traffic conditions, we have parking variances, and there's a request that we should also uh, consider non-conforming uses. There's soil issues, they're very, very important. Yes, you're going to remove some of that soil and replace it, and it's due to the grade going down. We have a grade going down also on 350 Revere uh, Beach Boulevard, but we also have ample parking uh, for many of the units. We still need, and I have three cars also, I have to rent or park <coughs> in the street. 
This is an issue. Uh, I asked the board to stay any decision until the traffic studies have been reviewed by this zoning board, by the people, and some solution is presented to the people that live on the boulevard to solve our traffic congestion uh, issues. Uh, one last issue, uh, it, I believe under case law that if the building lot is too small and variances are required because of that, this board should not grant uh, a variance and approve the variance. As Mr. Powers rightly said, November 27th, and then it was reiterated on the 29th of uh, November, November. Um, as of right, a 55 unit building could be built. It's much smaller. I still don't like it, but at least we wouldn't have the number of people ingress, egress throughout the day. I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other opponents? Hi, my name is Joan Lindsell Ohassi. I'm a resident of the St. George at 350 Revere Beach Boulevard. Um, um, Deborah said a lot of the things I was going to say. I just wanted just to um, um, read and digest a couple of things that, uh, according to Section 10 of the, the Chapter 40A of the, the Zoning Act, which we all know that this comes under, um, it says that the permit granting authority. Um, Shall, um, sh uh, shall grant a variance, um, but if it finds that it finds a relating to the soil conditions, shape, or to topography of the lot, land, but not affecting the general zoning district, what it, which is which it is located, a little enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance or bylaw would involve a substantial hardship. This does not provide. This is. This does not provide a substantial. This again, granting this variance, they're, you're by say, you're saying that they're grant, they have a financial hardship. This is not a financial hardship, gentlemen. As you can see from the parcels in question and the topography, little enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance do not qualify or could not be construed as a substantial hardship. <laughs> this variance is not a hardship. This variance request qualifies as a substantial greedship, and we wish that you vote no. Go, go with smaller units, smaller size structure, set it back like everything else. The, it, because something was up um, on, the, on the street before, it doesn't mean that, that, you sh that they are entitled to have it on the street again. The zoning was changed to prevent that. This is a substantial greedship, and we hope that you deny it. Thank you. Are there any other opponents? A, an opponent, please step up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. My name is Teresa Lynch, I live at 350. You have to speak up because oh, that I'm microphone sorry. doesn't help you, it just helps the TV. Okay, right here? Nope, just speak up. Oh, all right, my name is Teresa Lynch, I live at 350 Revere Beach Boulevard, the St. George. I just like to say that I think our beach does not look like a beach anymore. It's starting to look like a monster that's building, building, buildings. We had the most, in America, uh, uh, in our towns, uh, our Revere Beach was noticed as the best beach, but it doesn't look like that anymore. It does not. We have nothing, no nice restaurant to go to, nothing that might be uh, a shop you can shop into, not, I don't mean food or anything, but it looks like there's building after buildings, and it just looks like a monster. It does not look like Revere Beach as it was. It has nothing. You have it, the one in, um, in Atlantic City. Ma'am, we have to stick to the zoning, so if you're opposed, you have to say why you're opposed and not anything about the history right. of the beach. I'm just saying that. When I'm, that's okay. all I want to say. It looks like a monster, the beach. All right. That's it. Thank you. Are there any other opponents? Please step up to the microphone and state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Walter Bennett. I live at 350 Revere Beach Boulevard. I own three units in the building. Um, the attorney for the developers at zoning before the uh, or meeting before the city council back in November promised uh, several of us who were at that meeting who live at the St. George that they would contact us and have a meeting to discuss 
the proposal. They've not done that. He misspoke today by saying he is cooperating and working with the people at the St. George. Now, it is my understanding, but I'm not even sure if it's true, that he has had, or some of his people, have met with a couple of our board members. But we have over 240 units. He has not met with us. <coughs> we don't know a lot that's going on, and we would like a face-to-face -face and a meeting before any decisions are made. My gut feeling for the building is we don't know what it actually looks like. We just see the footprint, and it's probably too large. I am concerned about the setbacks that the zoning requires. And um, I, it's not that I'd be opposed to construction of a building of some sort. I think it is too large. But he needs, he's promised to come and talk to us, and he hasn't done so. So before any decisions are made before this board, I think we have a right to have a face-to-face -face with these people and see what's going on. Maybe we can work something out. Maybe we can make some suggestions that they would like, and the whole project would be a better project. My basic point is he's, he's keeping everything within a very short leash, a number of people who knows what's going on in the area, and I think he should fulfill his promise. Thank you. Are there any other opponents? My name is Patricia Lloyd. I live at 350 Riviera Beach Boulevard, the St. George. I'm opposed to this building coming in primarily because of traffic and also because we're not sure what the soil conditions are. It seems to me we're putting the cart before the horse, that we do not have adequate information at this point to continue on to see the effects this, is, this building will have on our beach. And one of the traffic studies that were, was presented at one of the previous meetings was, I believe, Peabody, which is definitely very different than, than our area. It's not Riviera Beach Boulevard. With, uh, it was done, I think it was Peabody. And um, again, the soil conservation issues. I don't think we're getting um, adequate information prior to the building being built. And I would ask for you to please um, look for that information before, before it is, comes up. Thank you. Are there any other opponents? Hello, I'm Sheila Dara, and I live in St. George, and I'd just like to draw up this the petition. Name. And could you sp speak up so he can get your name as well, please? He couldn't Sheila hear you. Dara. Sheila. Thank you. And you'd like to present to the clerk? Uh, okay. Okay. If you step back to the microphone, please. And these are all from 350 Revere Beach Boulevard. Yes, they are. Okay, you can continue. No, that's all I had to say. Okay. Are there any other opponents? And if you could read into the record anything that was sent by mail or emails. This is a communication to the Board of Appeals from State Representative Vincent. I apologize for not being able to attend tonight's meeting, but I wish to convey to you of my concerns regarding 32329 Revere Beach Boulevard. Uh, project which is currently proposed. First, I want to make it perfectly clear that I am not opposed to responsible development, and I believe property owners have a right to build on their property. However, I also believe that the City of Revere has a right and a duty to its residents to demand responsible development. This includes promoting mixed-use development with an emphasis on more than more commercial space, not residential apartments. There is no why, reason why the developer cannot choose to scale down the number of apartments for this project while still allowing ample commercial space for Bianchi's Pizza, a Revere staple and fixture in our community. Regardless of what a developer can do by right, the right thing to do is to examine that the size lot in particular location to determine exactly what is appropriate to build there. <clears throat> Take, for example, the, the Atlantica 360 Revere Beach Boulevard, the Atlantica is situated on a similar sized area of land and has only 81 residential units. Additionally, the Atlantica has guest parking in front. 
In addition to the sheer number of apartments currently being proposed and the size of the lot, I believe there is a host of other issues that really need to be considered before allowing the current planned project to move forward. Namely, the, these issues include traffic, parking, and frontage, rear side, and spacing. <coughs> the proposed development before you is located at the most congested <coughs> intersection of the boulevard, where Revere Beach Boulevard, Ocean Avenue, and Revere Street all merge into one lane. As it is the right now, traffic on Revere Street from the boulevard to Nosher Road during morning and evening rush hours is gridlocked. This traffic only increases during warm weather and the summer months when people are visiting America's first public beach. The adverse traffic impacts of the development of this magnitude would have serious accessibility and safety consequences, especially considering the possibility of a 51-unit apartment building being built on Revere Street at the, the old Cove site. Adding traffic from an, an additional 145 units in the middle of the already over, uh, overly congested roadway would further burden the residents of not only the boulevard, but also those who live on the streets off of Revere Street between the boulevard and Osho Road, as well as the, the residents of the Point of Pines and the Ocean Avenue who traverse the boulevard. I am so also afraid that I would be placing people in danger should first responders have to navigate the narrow roadways to get through the heavy traffic to respond to a call. In addition to the increased traffic, I'm worried about the lack of adequate parking spaces in the proposal. As, it now, without, as of now, without the development, parking in the vicinity of Boulevard and Ocean Avenue is at a premium during the warm weather. My fear is that if, it, if this moves forward as proposed, many residents of this new development and their visitors will be parking on the boulevard, taking up prime parking spots for those who wish to visit America's first public beach. Finally, I also have serious concerns with the lack of space in the front, back, and sides of this development. Further, as currently planned, the proposal calls for only one thin driveway, which is itself seems like a public safety issue, should the police or the fire department and the ambulance have to respond to an emergency call at this building. Accordingly, the developer's plan, the building would be flush with the sidewalk, the front would not be set back at all, zero feet to be exact. Further, in the rear of the building, the developer is requesting a variance to allow for a 10.4 setback instead of 30 feet required by the city. In all sides, the developer seeks a 10.1 where the city requires 20. Trying to crimp such a large, sprawling structure onto a small plot of land is irresponsible. In closing, this project as currently proposed is neither responsible, nor is it in the best interest of the city and its residents. This conversation should not be about all or nothing, but rather a compromise that will leave the most people satisfied. If the developer truly invested in the city we all love so dearly, he will consider scaling back the size of this proposed project while still maintaining a space for the pizza place we all enjoy. For all of these reasons, I hope that before final approval of this project, your honorable body will take these matters into consideration and ask the developer to scale back his proposal. Thank you, Rosalie Vincent, State Representative. There is no other opponents here. Are there any other opponents? Hearing none, I will close that side of the hearing. Do any members wish to speak? Would the attorney like to clarify on anything that was mentioned as far as the meetings and the um, parking I'm the, sorry, the traffic study that was yeah, a question? Mr. Chairman, just a clarification, to be extremely brief. Um, the developer, uh, Mr. Philbin, uh, and his staff have met with the St. George at least on one occasion that I'm aware of. I am not at those meetings. And I know that they've had a couple of meetings with the Board of Directors, of which I was a, mem I was a, uh, a recipient participant in the, that discussion. We have been trying to get another meeting. Um, we have been trying for the last couple of weeks. Uh, however, uh, the person that we basically speak to just had a death in the family, and that's delayed us uh, from going forward. We are committed to working with the St. George, as we told the Revere City Council, and we expect to wait to meet with them before we go to the council. Um, what was the other thing you 
The traffic study. There the is traffic a traffic study. The traffic study was presented to the Revere City Council, um, I believe the last time I was before them at the subcommittee. We had a representative from TEC. Uh, she answered questions, uh, not only from the council, but from people that were in the audience. And at that point, the, uh, it became public record because I believe we filed it with the council. So it was always available. Thank you. I have one question just because it was brought up about the driveway. You're not at, the driveway is conforming to our current zoning, the driveway width. Am I correct to state that just to clear, just to make it clear? That is correct. The driveway complies with the, so with the zoning. So not being able to see that because I have, um, what is that, the width of that? 22 feet. Okay. Thank you. That was my question just because the... I didn't catch that till I heard it on, on the. Yeah, and there was also a request to, just for for the for the board's knowledge that that driveway be extended so the DPW and fire department can continue to access the easement um, in the rear of the property. And yeah, I understood that. I was just concerned about the width because I couldn't really read that here, and I and I thought that it was 22, but I wanted to make sure of that because I you can't really see that on here. And one more thing relative to the, to the traffic, the city did put out an RFP uh, for a large traffic study for the whole waterfront square area um, that in, would include this site further down and all the side streets that between uh, the boulevard um, and VFW Parkway and North Shore Road. Um, and we've agreed uh, as mitigation to fund a portion of that study just for the board's knowledge. Any other, any other members wish to speak? I had a question about the tandem. The, the, the microphones aren't working. You're just live for the TV audience, so you have to speak up for the audience in, I had a in here. question about the tandem parking. You're also looking for a variance on that, right? That's correct. In, in addition to. Um, in, in addition to the to the number of parking spaces, it's 14 spaces. These right? spaces right here. Well, how uh, would you manage that tandem parking? Uh, they'll the uh, the the units will they'll be assigned to units, so those will be assigned to two bedroom units or units that have more than one car. Any other member wish to speak? Okay. We have one more calendar item number to present <coughs> The to next this application evening. before the board is application A1801. This is the application of Margaret, uh, Margaret Cardoni, 41 Taft Street, Revere, requesting a height variance to enable the appellant to construct a two family dwelling over 30 feet in height at 41 Taft Street, Revere. Good afternoon, gentlemen. My name is Margaret Cardoni. I reside at 41 Taft Street, Revere, since 1983. Um, been family owned since that time, 35 years. Um, I've survived the tornado we all had in Revere, um, rebuilt and brought my house back up to its pre-state, and I was hit with the fire on June 13th. And unfortunately, I lost my property altogether at that time, my building altogether. Um, I have building plans that I've submitted. The plans fit exactly to what I initially had. I'm using the same print, footprint. And I'm also going with the same look as I previously had and as my neighbors. Taft Street, I've been there a long time. Our buildings, our houses are similar on that side of the street. So I'm just looking to go to the same exact height that I originally had and nothing more. But apparently the height code has changed for the city. So I'm asking if you could please waive that and allow me to have what I, I had initially. Okay, thank okay? you. Are there any proponents, anyone in favor? Hearing none, I'll close that side of the hearing. Any opponents? Hearing none, I'll close that side of the hearing. Any members wish to speak? This is really. Yeah, just one question, Mr. Chairman. The height, 
is exactly where it is right now. Well, it, it, unfortunately, there was a fire, but it's, yeah, it's no, staying. It it, the height was for the old house. For the old house. Unfortunately, yeah. now in order to keep the pitch of the roof the same, they have to comply yeah. with the new zoning. So the original height was 33. Right. Yeah. Do we wait here today to have your answer? We, we vote on this, and then you get a letter from the city clerk after that within the uh, 30 days, is it, John? The city clerk has up to how many days? 14 to, days to 14, issue a decision. They'll issue a decision to you. So there today. won't be a decision today? We, no. we vote on it, there'll be a, and then the decision will be sent to you within 14 days. And then there's a 20-day appeal. And then there's a 21-day appeal or a 20-day appeal. If it, nobody appeals, they can come into the clerk's office and get their decision certified. Okay. Thank you. First application before the board is the application of CBW Lending, LLC. Uh, and there is a motion to bring this on to the table. And the motion would be to uphold this in decision of the building inspector. The question now comes on upholding the decision of the building inspector. A yes vote is to uphold the decision. A no vote is to not uh, to object to his decision. Go to a vote. Mr. Bacilli is absent. Mr. D'Angelo? Yes. Yes. Mr. Lopes? Yes. Yes. Mr. Mazzoni? Yes. Yes. Mr. Pelton? Yes. Yes. Mr. Tucker? Yes. Yes. The decision of the building inspector is upheld. The next calendar item number? The next uh, matter before the board is to grant the relief requested by the appellant, uh, HR Development Company, specifically front side and rear setbacks, tandem parking, uh, driveway grade, and parking. Question comes on granting the relief requested of the appellant. Mr. Bacilli is absent. Mr. D'Angelo? No. No. Mr. Lopes? No. No, Mr. Mazzoni. No. No, Mr. Pelton. No. No, Mr. Tucker. No. No. It is denied. Variances are denied. Next calendar item number. The next item is uh, application A1801 of uh, Margaret Cardoni requesting a height variance. Question comes on granting the relief requested by the appellant. Mr. Bacilli is absent. Mr. D'Angelo? Yes. Yes. Mr. Lopes? Yes. Yes. Mr. Mazzoni? Yes. Yes. Mr. Pelton? Yes. Yes. Mr. Tucker? Yes. Yes. This variance is granted. Next meeting? The is next meeting will be on March 28th at 4 p.m. This meeting is adjourned.